Hello and welcome to our Earth's Foundation course. This is going to be quite the experience. It's just a sample of things to come, but we are going to have some fun learning about what it is that we live on and where we are in reality compared to what we've been taught. So this is going to be one of those journeys where we compare different realities, the reality that most people believe in, and then there's the reality that we will work to prove to see if it is true, and that's the reality that we read about in the Bible when it talks about creation. And so before we begin, I want to lay down some ground rules, some class rules, because you're going to be learning things that will blow your mind, and you're going to want to share them with your friends and family, and that is great. It's okay to share things. Just remember that once you start proving all things and finding out that what most of the world believes isn't true, it's not going to be received very well. And so when talking about this, remember to be extremely kind. Even if someone goes on the attack and starts attacking you for your beliefs or things that you can prove, even if you have the proof right there, I find that people just aren't always receptive. And so in those cases, you'll want to be extremely kind, just plant some seeds, and it's okay if they're not ready to look into things. Okay, so don't get mad at them. Just say, you know, it's okay. Just think about it. Don't worry about it. And do your best to keep peace. And so with that in mind, I'm going to share a verse with you that is one of my favorites on this matter. And it's one that I try to live by when sharing my beliefs with the world. And that verse that I'm speaking of is in 2 Timothy. And it says, again, I say, don't get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments that only start fights. The servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but must be kind to everyone, be able to teach and be patient with difficult people. Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Perhaps God will change those people's hearts and they will learn the truth. Then they will come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap, for they have been held captive by him to do whatever he wants. And so that's what you're going to experience. Many people who are held captive and the goal of the world you hear anytime you watch videos about certain things like space travel it always says it's trying to capture your imagination. And so that's what's happened. Our imaginations have been captured and held captive. That's literally played out. And so this verse applies to many experiences you are going to have in this world. And so I just wanted to give you that little warning for those of you who are new to this investigation and those of you who are coming out of or testing previous beliefs, because I know for me personally, I really had a big attachment to the imagery that I had seen my entire life. Not easy to part with it because we grew attached to it and it's everywhere. Images like this, the solar system, the globe on your science book, your history books, your English books, it was on everything. And so we grow attached to things that we see a lot. And the globe earth model is one of them. And for those of you who are new to this journey and you still believe in that, that's okay. We're going to be putting it to the test. That's what this course is about. But before we get started, this is your first challenge. I want you to write out a very simplistic definition of what earth is according to you, according to what you understand, not what anyone else has told you or what you've seen. What is earth to you? I want to see these definitions and see how you guys view Earth at the very beginning of this course and compare it to what you see at the end. So go ahead, pause the video, write that down, or type it up, whichever way is easier for you. All right, so now that you have defined what you believe Earth is, I want to do something that is really important and will help us on this journey, and that's go to the oldest documented record that holds clues to what our ancestors believed Earth to be. So the oldest written account of what Earth is can actually be found in most households that have a Bible. So if you have a Bible, I want you to go to it and look up how it defines the Earth 
and then write that definition below your definition so you can compare and see how your definition matches up with the oldest record of earth. So go ahead, find a Bible. If you don't have one on hand, you can use the internet to do this. Go on to BibleGateway.com or BibleHub.com and give us the biblical definition. Very simplistic. You don't have to find all the answers to the to the world and how it works. Just what earth is, and then we'll report back. Okay, hopefully you guys have written down something similar to what I have, and that is that according to the word, earth is simply dry land. In Genesis 1.10, that is the most simplistic and awesome definition of what earth is, because that's what people have known it to be throughout time. Only recently has that changed to where earth is a planet. But what was there made before dry land, you guys might have read past something there, and that something is a structure known as the firmament, a structure that will later have the sun, moon, and stars placed inside of it. And so he made the firmament before he even gave earth a name, and he called earth dry land. So earth, according to this description, isn't a ball, and it's not even really flat. Earth has many different elevation changes, as you see here on this topographical map, but the water's always going to flow into the sea. These rivers will move downhill, and you have dry land being Earth, Earth having many different shapes. In some places, it is extremely flat. If you've ever gone through Iowa or places in Kansas, these there's places out there that are extremely flat, and there's places out there that are extremely concave and extremely convex, just depending on where you are. So surface of the water, different story. We can test and try to prove if that's flat. That's something we're going to be doing in this course, fortunately, making many observations. So those are your two definitions that I wanted today was your own definition, the Bible's definition, and then what does the world tell us that earth is? And so this is your final definition. You can go to Google for this and just say, what is Earth? So look that up and compare the three. And this is going to give us a foundation of what we're going to be testing. Because you already have your beliefs. And then there's what the Bible says. And then there's what the world says. And so go ahead and look that up. Write it down and have it right next to your other two definitions. All right, now that you've had a chance to see all three, now you know what we're going to be testing, specifically the biblical definition and the worldview of what Earth is. And that gives us some things to do that will be fun. So when we come back next time, we can go over these and that is what the Word or the Bible says about the motions of this world, how fast it's moving, including the sun and moon. Do they have paths? Are they stationary? What does it say about them? So you'll be doing a little quest to find some answers in the Bible and look up all of these instances where it's mentioning how Earth is or isn't moving. So you can compile those. And sometimes you can take a shortcut and go online and see if somebody's already compiled them. But it's a lot more fun looking for yourself because chances are you'll find something that we have yet to see. And that's the cool thing about the Bible. There's lots of little hidden treasures in there that seem to just get looked over. Like Genesis 1, for example, we've looked past it many times and not seen what was all there. But I want to end this first little experience by telling you what our scientific method is going to look like. And it is, of course, straight from the Bible, because we are going to be proving all things. Sounds simple, but it's quite a challenge, because there's a lot of things that we see that seem to make sense on both models, and we're going to prove it. And when you do that, you'll see that the word is true with everything you try to throw at it, every little test you have. And so in addition to that, 
with step two, we're going to let the most high be true because that will keep us from falling for any upcoming deceptions. So this is going to be a fun journey. You all will have some experiments that you can do straight from the comfort of your own home. Some of them may require you going outside and looking up at the stars. It all depends on how much out of your comfort zone you want to get and how much fun you want to have. But this is going to be fun. I look forward to it. You guys are blessed to have parents that are guiding you to really work and prove these things out. So let's have fun doing this. And remember, like we said, be kind and come back with answers as to what the word says about the motions or lack of motions of this world. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>